Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk. And I thought I'd just give you a quick um, quick update on the um, Pi BV, um, BV20 that I'm working on. And basically, I've finished um, replacing all the capacitors I wanted to initially replace in the bottom section here. Um, which is um, a fair few... Ugh, a fair few rather nasty wax uh, wax caps and some of these are really quite leaky um, when when they're showing in the um, couple of hundred K ohms when you just connect them up to a uh, meter a standard digital meter you know the capacitor, capacitors are pretty shot so basically what I've done um, it's took me um, quite a while actually this is not an e a nice set an easy set to work on but I've been through, like I said, I've replaced all the waxes in uh, this bottom section. This is the section which is to do with actually producing the high voltage and the actual uh, raster on the screen. Um, this section up here is more to do with, um, this is your RF section, um, you know, your detector, um, RF amplifiers, things like that. Um, there's no IF in this set. Um, these um, early sets are actually TRF, um, tuned radio frequency. So you don't actually have um, an IF. Um, all you have is um, a detector and then various uh, stages of RF amplification. Um, which does it does simplify the um, set in some ways. But like I said these are early sets. They are a lot of components in there, and they are quite critical. Um, you'd be having real problems if you, know, if you damage one of these coils or something while you was working on it you do have to be incredibly careful while you are working on um, a set like this so basically what I'm up to now um, now I've got that section down there um, recapped to, to where I want it I've not replaced every single capacitor in this that would be, uh, be daft um, all I've done like I said is replace the, um, the wax paper capacitors um, like I said, these these now are really starting to get very leaky. Uh, when I first started messing about with um, old TVs and uh, radios over 20 years ago now, um, we used to still find these, and most in a set would probably be okay. Um, generally speaking, now from what I found recently, um, you find more leaky ones than you find um, good ones. So that's why I'm going through the process of really just getting rid of all them. Uh, I'm not, at the moment, I've not changed any of the um, Sprague metal can um, capacitors, these ones here. We've got um, one, two, three, I think there's another one on the other side of the chassis there, four of those. Now, those tend to be a little bit more reliable than the old um, waxes. What I'll probably end up doing with them, if I can find my um, high tension um, bench power supply, I've got a a uh, proper bench power supply that's designed for working on uh, valve equipment like this and um, it's got a variable um, high tension output from you know zero up to about 400 volts um, and what we can do we can actually use that to test um, these capacitors what we can do is we'll um, lift the side that goes to ground we'll connect a meter between that and ground and then we'll um, put say um, couple of hundred volts into the capacitor and uh, measure what leakage we've got on the output and obviously if it doesn't leak we know the capacitors are right if we've got a lot of leakage there we'll um, replace the capacitor so like I said we won't just um, automatically replace those we'll do a bit more testing on them and if they're okay they can stay in circuit um, there's also there's um, quite a lot of electrolytics still in the set now I've changed the two main uh, ones that have got you know a few hundred volts on them I believe there's another one um, I think it could be that one down there that's um, a high voltage one you know it's got a couple hundred volts on it I'll probably change that but the um, the ones that are under 50 volts um, electrolytics at the moment like that one that one um, I think there's a couple more kicking about. Um, where are they now? Well, at the moment, I can only see that one. Oh, sorry, that one and that one. Um, uh, 
the moment, I'll probably just leave them in there, because if they're bad, they're not actually going to really... S they're not going to cause anything catastrophic with the um, set. I mean, we'll test them, and if they're okay, we'll leave them. Um, if they're not, obviously, we'll replace them with um, a modern electrolytic. Uh, but I'm not going to change them out just immediately. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is get all them um, horrible waxes out of there. And then we'll test, you know, said so we'll test these um, Sprag branded capacitors, because I have found a few which have been bad over the years, but generally speaking, they seem to um, hold up fairly well, those. And then, like I said, we can actually um, have a look at powering this thing up and um, see how we go from there. I'll probably just do a couple more of my um, changing some of these caps on um, on film now, just so I can um, you can see a bit more of the work I'm doing. Just show how um, awkward some of these are to do. I have started up here. I've done a few rounds there. I've done a couple over here. One there. Um, I've done one there and now I've just spotted we've got one hiding here. Now most of these, they're um, 0 0.001 UF. Um, these these are the wax ones I've uh, been taking out. Um, rated at about 500 volts. Uh, fortunately what I've got, and I've got quite a lot of them, is I've got a load of these. Now they are like designed for PCB mount, but they are in very very small. Same value, these are um, 0 0.001 UF, but these are actually rated at 630 volts, so they've got a slightly higher voltage rating than what um, the originals I'm taking out. And because of the small size, it actually makes them quite nice and easy to fit. Um, the other, basically, in the same value, let me just dig one out. Uh, just bear with me a second folks. Ah, there they are. I do have them again, but these. Now these are rated at a thousand volts. But if you see the um, size difference. You know, these are a lot easier to fit in this, um, this part of the circuit here in the chassis than um, these are. And they've still got a higher voltage rating than the originals that we're taking out. So, um... I know they don't look 100% original, but I still think these are the better, um, the better substitutes at the moment, especially when it's really tightly packed in like this. Let's get my um, get my my glasses on. What I found really useful while working on this is um, old iPhone. One thing that the, the um, as a nice little. Uh, I can get it to work. Just a minute. Why won't it? I was going to say. And now. Now I want to demonstrate it on the um, camera. It won't bloody work, will it? But what I was going to say is that it's got a good um, light on it. Let's use mine. There we go. They have a good light on them, which is really handy when you um, want to get close in on these sets. So I think what we'll do, we'll have a go at changing that one there. That looks a likely candidate to um, swap out. Now it's it goes to that piece of grounding material on that side. There. Let me see if I can just zoom you in a bit so you can see what we're working on. Let's get you up a little bit. And then... Right, there we go. So basically what we're going to be doing is changing... Can you see that capacitor right there? That's the one that we plan to change. Now it's soldered to that piece of um, grounding material there. It's like a screen across that valve. So that's the one side that goes to ground because that then goes across and up to a ground point there. And it goes to this resistor that's just floating in mid-air there. So that should be quite a nice easy one to um, swap out. Might as well do that. I'll put my light up at the top there. There we go. So it just shines a bit of light on to make life easy so we can um, actually see what we're doing. Like I said, the... Uh, 
correct uh, full restore way of doing this would be to completely take all the solder out from that point there take all the solder off uh, from that point there remove it then redo all that connection re-solder it all but to be honest you, you end up doing more damage than um, good doing it that way especially when it's a really packed set like this so the way I go about it we go in with the snips I'll snip snip that lead off there we can pull that out now in this instance we might actually be able to just desolder that because because it's just the one capacitor on the one resistor there let's let's see how hard this is going to be to desolder now this in this instance there we go now the only reason I've done it like that was because it was so easy to take off. So yeah, if it had been um, any harder than that, I would have just snipped the um, snipped the leg off. Let's just double check the um, value on here. Now, every other one that I've found of these has been, like I said, 0 0.001, so we'll just double check. There we go. If you can make that out. Let me see if I can get that to uh, focus. Come on. I don't know if I can get that to focus on that, but take my word for it. It says it's uh, 0 0.001 UF at 500 volts, and we're going to be replacing it with one of these 0 0.001 UF at uh, 630 volts. And what I'm going to do, I'll just prep that um, you down so you can see what I'm doing. We come down here. There's the um, capacitor. I'm um, just going to get a bit of, little bit of heat shrink. Or any sleeve in it do. Um, I'm just using heat shrink because I've got plenty of um, little short lengths of it. ourselves a couple of short lengths of heat shrink. Take the capacitor. Put the legs over like that. Now on one side I would normally do this on both sides but because um, because we've got that uh, resistor leg to go to, I'm only going to do it on this one side here. If you see I've bent the, um, let me see if I can get you in shot. If you can see I've bent the leg round to create a little loop like that. So I'm on, I would normally do that on both sides, but because we've got that um, resistor to solder to, I'll do it slightly different on this one. But what I do, just basically fill that little well up like that with solder, as you can see. Now I'll get you back up to where we're um, where we're working on the oops. Let's see if I can get you back up to where we're working on the. Uh, now where's my finger? Yeah, there we go. You can see where we're working here, can't you? There we go. That's better, isn't it? You can see where we're working here. That's where we took the um, capacitor out from them two points there. And what I'm going to do, I've got a little bit of wire there that's sticking up from, uh, oh, that's from where I've um, soldered that capacitor, and that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of solder, just to add a little bit of solder to that connection there, and then we can uh, just lay this wire on. I'm just going. I'm just going to add a touch of solder, just that connection like that. We'll take the capacitor that we got before. Let's bring it in. Solder it. Make sure the solder flows properly, like that. 
just hold it in place until it sets. There we go. And I can position the, position the capacitor as close to where the old one was really. We can bend that leg round the resistor. in place there so basically it's just a case of doing that a lot of times the next one I think we'll do is uh, well I'm going to do off um, camera because so I was only going to make this a little short video but we've got another one there that goes from uh, that valve up to that ground point there so I can say if that's got any um, voltage on it any high, any high tension on it and that component's leaky it's going to pull that high tension to ground and while we're in here we just it's just easier for me to go in and basically just swap all these out now while I'm in this point and especially considering most of these are the same value so I can just get a load out like that and literally just go around and just keep swapping them out swapping them out you see I'm not going to bother changing any of the electrolytics at this point well, uh, in the next video, I'll see if I can rig up some kind of um, high voltage supply. We'll test some of these um, Sprag capacitors. Let me just, while I've got you zoomed in, let me get you down so you can see which ones I'm talking about. These ones here. Uh, we can change out some of the. We can test some of these Sprag capacitors. We'll probably check some of the electrolytics, make sure they're not shorted. Um, and once we've done that, we can actually apply some power to this thing and um, see if we can get first light on the screen. Uh, anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. Like I said, this was just a quick little interim updated video um, show you how far I've um, got on with it. So, um, hope you enjoyed that. Um, thanks for watching and goodbye.